Good afternoon, my name is Stacy Williams, and sorry I cannot be with you today to present this um, presentation, but today I'm going to be talking about why, the importance of restocking sea urchins and improving coral reef restoration. The picture that you see on the screen is a common sight here in Puerto Rico uh, on shallow water reefs, and it might be the case uh, in your country uh, where we're seeing a decrease in coral cover and an increase in fleshy macroalgae cover like increase in dictyota also um, uh, in labophora so in here in puerto rico what we've been seeing also is an increased abundance of uh, encrusting pacinelli called rami crusta on the east coast of Puerto Rico, I've measured Rami Cresta cover to be as high as 60%. So this is the dominant substrate on most east coast reefs. And we're seeing uh, this pace and alid also increase in abundance uh, all over Puerto Rico. Uh, the Rami Cresta uh, is quick grower and uh, can't overgrow and smother live coral tissue as you see in the right hand photos um, on this Arbacella annularis colony. Given that many Caribbean coral reefs have a high abundance of benthic algae like fleshy macroalgae, or in your region you might have a high abundance of Rami Crusta, it is not ideal to go out and outplant corals on these reefs because most likely the corals are not going to be able to survive or compete against this algae. So what reef restoration practitioners usually do is they manually uh, clean the substrate um, and maintain the substrate clean um, so that these coral outplants can survive. This requires, um, possibly requires a lot of people in the water and a lot of boat time and can be very costly. So why don't we take advantage of herbivores and let herbivores do the job? So we can enhance herbivory by restocking herbivores and the main herbivores that we have on Caribbean reefs are sea urchins like diadema, um, tripnustes and Econometra veritas. We have herbivorous fish like the pearfish and surgeon fish and we also have herbivorous crabs. So in my presentation today, I'm going to be focusing on sea urchins and sea urchins and restocking sea urchins, but these techniques can be used for other herbivores. So there are three ways to restock herbivores. You can re redistribute healthy populations. So you can take a couple individuals from a healthy population and move them to another reef. We, we will be doing this here in Puerto Rico with Econometra viridis um, and moving them to deeper reefs to see if they eat Labophora. Another way of producing individuals um, for restocking is by larval rearing them in the lab. Uh, Josh Patterson in Florida and Alwyn and Seba are doing this uh, with Diadema antelarum. I'm currently doing this with Tripnustes ventricosus here in Puerto Rico. Um, this, that's the West Indian sea egg, as you can see in the picture, um, in the middle picture. Another way to produce individuals um, to restock to reefs is to collect uh, the post larval settlers and I'm currently doing this um, with diadema and I will go more into detail on how we do this and some of the results that we've had um, when we do restock uh, these sea urchins to the different reefs. So I'm not going to go into details on how we collect settlers, diadema settlers here in Puerto Rico. Um, if you want, please contact me and I can guide you on how to set up um, uh, mooring lines or sediment plates in your region. Uh, what we do here in Puerto Rico is that we, during the summer months, because that's when there is a peak in settlement of diadema, uh, we set out mooring lines with sediment plates. And these sediment plates, which are just made of um, astroturf, these plastic mats, um, doormats, um, these plates are set out for a month at a time and uh, we, when we collect them, we bring these plates back into lab and we individually pick off the urchins off these plates. This is uh, on the bottom right hand side of, 
uh, the screen, you can see um, the small little sea urchin. This is a diadema settler. Settlers can range from 0.4 millimeter in size to a millimeter in test diameter. Um, usually they are red um, and they have banded spines. So these urchins are placed in tanks at the Department of Marine Science at the University of Puerto Rico. And they're in these tanks for about almost a year. Um, until they reach a young adult size, which is between two to four centimeters in size. And then, then that, that's when they're ready to then be transferred to the different coral reefs. Here are some results from the last restocking event uh, late last year and early this year. This site is in the east of Puerto Rico called Cayo Largo in Fajardo. Um, as you see in the picture, the top left picture, um, before restocking diadema, the reef was characterized by a high abundance of dictyota. Um, after two weeks, diadema removed all the dictyota, and what was left was Rami crusta. This is very common um, here in Puerto Rico, where we have seen fleshy macroalgae growing on top of Rami crusta. Um, by to one month, uh, diadema have removed most of the Remy crusta, um, and by two months, you can see the substrate is really clean. So what we've seen in a two month span is that diadema can significantly reduce the cover of Remy crusta, um, also of fleshy macroalgae like dictyota, and also those thick turf mats that collect sediment. So given these positive results um, of restocking diadema, what we've been doing here in Puerto Rico is that we restock diadema in areas where we're out planting corals. So in the next couple slides, I will show you some of the preliminary results that we have record recorded so far. Here in Puerto Rico, my organization, ESER, along with the Department of Marine Science at the University of Puerto Rico, Mayaguez, and the New York Restoration Center, developed the first land-based coral nursery um, in La Perguera. We currently have 14 raceways. Uh, we, my organization also received funding um, from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation to develop an, a second land-based coral nursery in Ceiba. Um, we will have 12 tanks. Um, this is in collaboration with the Department of Environmental and Natural Resources and also Sociedad Ambiente uh, Marino, SAM, uh, a nonprofit organization located in Rio Piedras and San Juan. In our coral nurseries, we've been focusing, focusing on microfragging eight coral species. These include the three species of Orbicelids, also Dendrodryer cylindris. Um, corals that have been affected by stony coral tissue loss disease like Matistrea cavernosa, uh, Pseudodiploris dragosas. Um, we've been actively, well before Fiona, we've been, we were actively rescuing some of um, the corals like uh, the Matistrea cavernosas and Pseudodiploris dragosas um, that were not affected by the disease and bringing them back in lab. Um, and microfragging them and keeping them in tanks. Um, so these are the corals that we've been using um, and outplanting to the, the different coral reefs, um, mainly in La Perguera and also on the East Coast in Fajardo with our partners, um, Sea Ventures. Late last year, we did an experiment. This is part of uh, master student's thesis, Noel Carrera. He was supposed to present at the meeting but ended up canceling his trip because of uh, the storm. Um, but what we did was that uh, we focused on four patch reefs um, at Margarita. This is in La Praguera in the southwest part of Puerto Rico. So two patch reefs, the control patch reefs, uh, we outplanted just corals. And then the two other patcheries, we outplanted corals and we restocked diadema, and those were called the experimental um, patch reefs. So these photos are from a couple months after outplanting the corals. Uh, this is at the control reef. So this is the, the reef that does not have any diadema. As you can see, uh, the Pseudodiploria strigosa um, frags outplanted are, are competing, are getting kind of covered in cyanobacteria and um, by fleshy macroalgae like dictyota in the upper left hand picture of the screen. Now at 
the experimental patch reef where we outplanted corals and diadema, you can see a stark difference um, in, the, in the cover of algae. Um, this is the same genotype as the coral that I showed in the, the previous slide. So you can see that the corals, uh, the, the surrounding of the coral is, is really clean. Um, you can see uh, qu quite a bit of CCA, and these corals are uh, not competing against cyanobacteria and uh, fleshy mackerel. As you see um, from the pictures on the screen, the picture to the left, uh, corals outplanted without diadema. Uh, the picture to the right is corals outplanted with diadema. And what a difference it is. Um, the corals to the right, again, are not competing against, um, are competing with uh, algae, and most likely will have a higher survivorship um, than the corals to the left, where are being smothered by flesh macro algae and also cyanobacteria. Also in 2019, uh, we did a small little experiment where we outplanted our proper palmata uh, cuttings to one of the reefs where we restocked diadema. So we placed uh, the cuttings uh, in areas where there are no diadema and then areas where we restock the diadema. And these photos are a year after outplanting these cuttings and you can see that uh, the, the cuttings of palmata that were um, cemented um, in areas without diadema, you can see that the dictyota is slowly encroaching and covering the palmata where to the right, um, the, the palmatas that were cemented in areas where we restocked diadema, you can see that the substrate's really clean um, or surrounding the live tissue. So most likely, again, the coral to the right is going to have a higher survivorship than the coral to the left, just due to the competition um, with uh, fleshy macro algae. So in conclusion, diadema are effective in removing fleshy macro algae. Also, they're really thick turf mats with sediment and rami crusta. Uh, their grazing effects can be seen one week, two weeks, one month, two months after restocking them to the reef. We believe that diadema will increase the survivorship of coral out plants um, because what we've been seeing is that uh, diadema uh, will remove fleshy macroalgae and cyanobacteria that many times will compete against um, uh, these coral out plants. Um, now, given that there is a mortality of diadema um, in the region and um, uh, there should be some consideration when restocking uh, diadema to the different habitats. Like, for example, you don't want to uh, restock diadema to a reef that has a high abundance of triggerfish because um, they will, that a triggerfish is their main predator. Um, you can use other species of sea urchins uh, to restock to uh, decrease um, benthic algae. Um, for example, like Echinometra viridis, the rock urchin, um, they're smaller, so you will need more of them, but they are, are as effective at removing um, benthic algae. Also, um, I was supposed to present uh, some results of our, of we restocked um, the West Indian sea egg, Trypneusti ventricosus. Um, what we found is that they will also uh, eat fleshy macroalgae. Um, they just take a little bit longer time than uh, diadema antelarum. So you can use different approaches, um, as specifically different species of sea urchins, uh, to, to maintain and reduce um, benthic algae on your coral reefs. Again, sorry I can't be there in person, um, but please feel free to contact me. Um, uh, here's my email, um, our organization's website. Um, this project is in collaboration with NOAA, um, the Department of Natural Resource and the Environment here in Puerto Rico, and also Sea Ventures. So thank you for listening.